All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our friends from Mozzie Winery from the Veneto stopped by to see us. And this is a winery that has been bringing the local Corvina varietal to different parts of the world just to see how it grows there. You don't see Corvina outside of the Veneto in too many places. And this is one of my favorite wines, Amarone. Corvina, the most important wine they used to make this. These guys are in South Africa with this varietal. They're in Argentina, like the second wine we're having. Uh, they're also in Washington State, in Israel. And they're making wine, the pesimento, the drying the grapes like they do in Amarone, that style, just to see how Corvina works in different parts of the world. Well, we know it works pretty good in Argentina. And uh, let me tell you what, I'm excited about tasting the wines from Washington State, South Africa, and even Israel, just to see how Corvina works in different parts of the world. Our first wine, the Masianco, is a blend of late-harvested Verduzzo and Pinot Grigio. Verduzzo, a local varietal there. This is a very clean wine, a nice fresh bouquet, pretty floral notes, lime citrus, green apple, notes of whetstone minerality there. A light and refreshing wine on the tongue, even has a little bit of a spritz to it on the finish. A little bit of impression of spritz. That Verduzzo that's late harvested adds a little bit of weight to the mid palate. A very good little wine for 12 bucks. Really nice little quaffer. And then the Masi Tupangato Valle Uco Malbec and Corvino. This is the Argentina project that they started back in 1985. 1989 was the first vintage they produced here. And uh, like I said, they're attempting to see what this local Corvina varietal does in different places. And they found that in Mendoza, they don't need to dry the grapes as long because of the altitude. Uh, it takes like a, a third less time, two months instead of three months. And uh, this wine has that textbook kind of character of Amarone because of the dry, dry grapes. Um, kind of dried fruit smell on the nose, plum and cherry, notes of brown spice also. Rather simple on the palate, smooth and easy, drinking with nice fruit, some dark spice and earth notes on the finish, but a, a very good little wine for 12 bucks. Again, first two wines, really nice little values here. The Masi Barolo Campofor in Oro was the next wine, and that's kind of like, um, well, it's the first vintage of this wine, actually. It's like a reserve version of this wine, which you see in a lot of places. Only a third of the grapes are dried here, but they're dried for a longer time. It's a blend of 80% Corvina, 20% Rondinella, and uh, it's made in 600-liter barrels, so no nuke barrique here. It's a good amount of ripe, dark cherry liqueur-like fruit here, sweet tobacco spice, some of that clay minerality, almost like a Play-Doh character I get from the minerality in these this part of the world. Nice richness on the tongue, sweet, ripe cherry fruit, a nice hand of spice, dried floral notes to the finish, excellent juice at $25.50. Just a few dollars more than the regular Campo Fiore. All right, the Masi Amarone Costa Sera. Up next, this is one of the most popular Amarones we've ever had in the store. And at $55, a great value. A blend of 70% Corvina, 25% Rondanella, and 5% Molinara. The last grape a lot of people leave out of the blend today. It's no longer legal to have to use it. And there's a little botrytis in this wine. They like a little bit of that noble rot in their Corvina to get a little added richness. Um, not a classic style because of the fast fermentation, no oxidization, giving you a much brighter wine, less of that dried fruit character, but you still get some of that cherry, almost liqueur-like fruit and richness, and a little bit of that dried character. They do still dry the fruit in this wine, and uh, really nice minerality to this wine, that clay kind of Play-Doh minerality showing through here as well, some brown spice and sweet tobacco, good amount of that sweet tobacco, spice and cherry liqueur-like fruit on the tongue with a potpourri of dried floral notes. And uh, really fresh, though. This wine definitely showing the different style here on the finish as well and uh, leaving the palate refreshed. Amarones can be big and a little clunky sometimes, but this wine has wonderful balance and freshness. Excellent juice. The Reserva Costa Sera, this is only the third release for this wine. And by law, Reserva means you have to age it for an extra year. And Amarone was not DOCG. I don't think until the 2006 vintage, but by law, only has to be aged for two years before release. They have replaced a little bit of the Corvina in the blend here with with a local variety that you rarely see called Oceleta. And this wine has got some tannic backbone to it, something you don't see in the other main varietals here that are used to make Amarone. So you get kind of a wild game note to this wine, exotic spices, really rich and unctuous on the palate, showing some of that tannins there. But because of the drying of the grapes, they're a little smoother, a little more accessible. Lovely dark spices, cocoa, and a long finish. Big, but still fresh here and balanced. Excellent juice. And then the big boy. These guys were the first people to make single vineyard wines in the Veneto. 1958, their first vintage for Campolongo. And uh, 64 for the Mazzano, the wine that we had here. And um, this is a single vineyard in Negrar. And they actually dry the grapes right there at the vineyard site. They feel like 
that this has something to do with what the wine is, the place where it's made, so they want to dry the grapes there to keep that terroir, that concept of terroir, alive and well. And this is a great site because it's low humidity, which is very good for drying grapes, a little bit more of an austere style of Amarone here, but this is packed with spice, black cherry liqueur-like fruit, mocha, clove, sweet tobacco. And even though it's 2001 vintage, there's a few cases of this kicking around, this wine's still got a lot of sweet black cherry liqueur-like fruit, lovely dark spice showing on the finish, a really long and layered wine, showing some evolution, but still quite youthful and fresh, even better on the second day, most excellent juice, as it should be, at 169 bucks a bottle. That's what we had to drink with our friends from Mozzie Winery. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.